Bonjour, classe de français 2. Aujourd'hui, on apprend quelques nouveaux verbes. On y va? Oui, on y va. Class, we're starting off with a brand new verb. It is the verb boire. Boire means to drink. And you might recognize this word from the word that means a drink from our vocabulary a couple weeks ago, une boisson. Vous voyez? Une boisson is a drink. Boire is the verb to drink. So if you want to say, I'm drinking a drink, you say, je bois une boisson. Here's the conjugation. Je bois. Tu bois. Il boit. Elle boit. On boit. Bois, 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 bois. There it is. It should look kind of familiar because it does follow a very similar pattern to one of our verbs from earlier, devoir. Je dois, tu dois, il doit. Notice that je and tu are the same. They both end with an S. And then il, elle, and on are also all the same because they always are. But then instead of ending with an S, they end with a T. That's a pattern that we've seen before. And now we get over to nous and vous. Nous buvons. Vous buvez. Something has changed. Here we have a totally different spelling at the beginning. Instead of bois, 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 now we're getting into buvon, buve, bu, but still with the familiar o and s, easy. And now il and l, guess what they do? They go right on back to bois, but now it's boive, v e n t, l boive. So you know where I'm going with this, friends. This is a shoe verb. If I circle these spellings. The conjugations that have the same stem, remember the stem is the beginning of the verb, they all make the shape of a shoe. Je bois, tu bois, il bois, elle bois, il boive, elle boive. But nu and vu, they're off here hanging out, doing their own thing. They're not part of the shoe. And normally, nu and vu, we would call them the laces because they tie back to the infinitive, but not in this case. Notice that here, it's the other ones, the ones in the shoe, blah, 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 that ties back to the infinitive. So this is a slip on, this is a moon boot, just put your foot right in it, nothing to tie. These are not tied to anything, you just have to learn those conjugations. Okay, that's one of our verbs. And then if you're paying close attention, you'll notice we have several other verbs in our textbook. I can move myself where you can still see the verbs. But even though there are several other verbs that we're learning about, they all follow a similar pattern. So if we learn one, we can learn the others with just a couple little changes in some of the details. This next verb is the verb achete. Achete means to buy. C'est la rentrée demain, je vais faire des achats. Comes from that. Des achats are purchases, things you buy. Achete is the verb to buy. Notice the conjugation as I go through it. J'achète, tu achètes, il achète, elle achète. Nous achetons, vous achetez, ils achètent, elles achètent. Nothing crazy. In fact, this is a regular ER verb where you drop the ER and you change the endings. E, E, S, E, O, M, S. Easy E N T. Those endings have been the same ever since French one for E R verbs. So that's good news. But there is a teeny tiny change that you have to make. Besides the ending, there is a stem change. The stem is the first part of the verb. Look at what's going on here. J'achète has an accent grave. Tu achètes has an accent grave. Il achète, elle achète. Both have accent grave. Quick reminder over here on, it's my left. Is it your left or is it your right? Anyway, over here on the side, you can see a little review of accents. We learned when we did the passé composé that all of those endings with the accent aigu make an A sound. J'ai joué, 
tu as mangé, il a écouté la radio, nous avons regardé la télé. All of those have that accent aigu that makes an A sound. Well, now we're looking at an accent grave right here that makes an E sound. And notice the letter E by itself en français is pronounced E. But when you add an accent and change the sound, an accent grave changes it to E. All set, you bet, E. So this verb is pronounced j'achète, to achète. There's the E sound right there with the accent grave. Il achète, elle achète. But look at nous and vous. There's no accent. And this is pronounced nous achetons. Vous achetez. There's an E. Uh, it's barely, barely perceptible. Achetons. Achetez, if I exaggerate it. But really, you just kind of gloss over that vowel sound. It's not super strong like it is here with the accent grave. Ils achètent. Elles achètent. Adding that teeny tiny accent makes a world of difference in the spelling and the pronunciation. And guess what? Are you seeing what I'm seeing? Are you seeing the shoe? Circle all the conjugations that have the accent grave. Et voila. And this time, this time, nous and vous are the laces. Because pay attention, they tie back to the infinitive. There's no accent grave on the infinitive either. So that helps. It's a standard shoe verb. The only thing you have to really remember is that accent grave. So class, there are several other verbs that we learned that have stem changes. Here's achete and its friend amene. Notice achete has that accent grave and so does amene. So a conjugation with this would be jamen. Can I get an amen? Jamen with the accent grave. But when it's new or vu, it's just going to be nous amenon, vous amene. Let's take a look at préféré and espéré. They do a similar thing because it's all about the accents. The accents are the thing this time around. Notice that préféré has two accents aigu. And I'm going to exaggerate those just a little bit more, lest you miss them. Pré, fé, ré. That makes that A sound, right? A, there we go. Préféré. But when you conjugate it, you say je préfère. And here's how it's spelled. Je préfère. Oh, class, look at that. This accent stays the same. This one changes to an accent grave just like we did with acheté and amené. So it's all about that accent grave. Espéré does the same thing, but espéré only has one accent to begin with. So this is the one, this accent aigu, that when you conjugate it, notice over here, it flips. I hope you remember this. J'espère que vous vous rappelez de cette conjugaison avec l'accent grave. Another thing that I like to do with um, préféré especially, and I never know if my hands are going the right direction. So is that an accent aigu for you guys? I think it is. Is it going, I get my angle right on the camera. It's going up and to the right. Yes, préféré. But then when you switch it, it's je préfère, and this one flips. So what I like to say is windshield wipers for the infinitive, eyebrows, 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 for nu and vu, it goes back to windshield wipers, windshield wipers, eyebrows. Préféré, mais je préfère. Tu préfères, il préfère. Nous préférons, windshield wipers, vous préférez, et il préfère, elle préfère. That's your conjugation with those flip-flopping accents. There's one more. This one does not involve accents, which maybe is a bit of a relief. We're talking about payer, nettoyer, envoyer. They all end with a Y-E-R. And the conjugation is je paie, tu paie, il paie, 
So that Y, as you can see, je pay, changes to an I. The Y goes back when it's new and vu, so it's nu pay yon, and you can hear it in the pronunciation. It makes a y sound, right? Nu pay yon, fu pay ye, but then it's back to il pay, p a i e n t. Still using those regular er verb endings. So, what's the main thing with this chapter? With these verbs. Class, you got to remember your regular ER verb conjugations. That's the key. You're dropping the ER. Did you notice they're all ER verbs? Super helpful. Drop the ER and then add E, E, S, E, O, N, S, E, Z, E, N, T. And then think to yourself, what's the stem change? What's the accent? What do I have to flip? What do I have to change? That's going to get you these stem changing conjugations. Of course, we will practice more in class, but go over this, go over your notes as many times as you need to remember your stem changing verbs. There's one more thing that we talked about in class. If you have your notes, they should look like this, all filled in, where we've talked about what are we going to buy? Are we going to buy some, du, de la, or de, not any, got that marked right here. Are you going to buy one thing, un croissant, un sandwich, une magazine? Or do you like something? I like it. J'aime la tarte. I prefer it. Je préfère le soda. So we've got a few teeny tiny grammatical things going on in this chapter. I wanted to do for the last thing in this video, let's just go over some of this real quickly. We'll be doing this in class as well. But if you're watching my video right now, you'll be ahead of the game. So if you're having bread, for breakfast, or the French are so tough they have pain for breakfast, you're going to say, I'm having some bread for breakfast. Je prends du pain pour le petit déjeuner. And it's the same thing here. If you're buying something, he, il achète, he's buying some ham, some water, you want to use the word that means some. That's this partitive article right over here. Masculine, feminine, plural, starting with a vowel. We've got a little bit of both here. We have masculine, il achète du jambon, some ham, a de l'eau minérale, l apostrophe, because O starts with a vowel, some mineral water. Now we get to this question. It says, où a? Where is? Think about it in terms of English, if it helps. Would you ask, where is some jelly? Where is a jelly? Where is the jelly? I like that last one. Where is the jelly? You want to use le, oh, not le, confiture is feminine. You want to use la, ou est la confiture, because you're asking about the jelly, not some jelly. Oui? And I'm going to skip down to this one because it's also related to that. If you like something or prefer something or even don't like something, you also use that definite article, le, la, or le. In English, we say, I like chicken. In French, they always have an article, but since you're saying, I like it, the word for it is le or la or le. So I like it. I like chicken. J'aime le poulet. But I prefer roast beef. That I prefer. I prefer it. Je préfère le roast beef. Again, we'll be talking more about that in class. But if you wanted to take a minute and pause the video here, could you fill out the rest of these things? Class, if it's a like or a dislike, le la le. If you're talking about some, du, de la, and if it's not any, pas de. So, see if you can fill these out on your own, and when we go over it in class, you'll see if you got it right. Thanks for tuning in. Remember, if you haven't already, to subscribe, because as new videos pop up, I'll be posting them here. All of it to help you with La Classe de Francais. Merci mes amis, à bientôt et au revoir.